Hi grade 12s, in this video we're going to be doing some impulse and impulse momentum questions. Remember to subscribe if you haven't yet, let's jump right in. We'll be tackling the following questions. As a reminder, if you do not know what impulse is and the impulse momentum theorem, I encourage you to first watch the video on that linked below. But this is the formula sheet that you'll be given. And our impulse formulae are as follows. That's the formula to calculate impulse. This is essentially the impulse momentum theorem over here. And over here we have change in momentum. So let's read the question. The question says a 500 gram ball. And you first need to know that when you see grams in physics, we don't work with grams in physics. We work with grams in chemistry. If you see grams in physics, we have to convert it to kilograms. We have to divide by a thousand. So that gives me 0 0.5 kilograms. And that ball hits a wall at 20 meters per second. Okay, my writing jumps over here meters per second so this is my initial velocity 20 meters per second towards the wall my initial velocity and directly bounces back after being in contact with the wall for 0.1 seconds and the momentum of the ball changes by 15 kilograms meters per second so what they've given me in the question is as follows now, when we deal with physical sciences, physics questions, we need to choose a positive direction. So if I've got the wall over here and I've got the ball going towards the wall over here, I'm going to choose my initial positive direction or my initial direction as the positive direction. So towards the wall is my positive direction. And keep in mind in this question that the ball is changing direction. So my final velocity will be in the opposite direction, the negative direction. Because there's a change in direction of the velocity, there's a change in direction of the momentum. Okay, the final momentum will be in the opposite direction to the initial momentum. And because of this, it actually means that the change in momentum will be a negative change. Remember... If you struggle with the directions, go and watch the video on vector diagrams relating to momentum. It is essentially this scenario. Okay, not these numbers. This is from a previous scenario. So ignore the situation. But the diagram is the same. The initial velocity is to the right, let's say, or towards the wall. The final velocity and therefore the final momentum will be away from the wall. So in this case, to the left. And therefore the change in momentum is also in the negative direction. Now, what does A want? A wants the magnitude and direction of the impulse that the wall exerts on the ball. Now, remember, in the previous impulse video, I told you that impulse is equal to F net multiplied by delta T. So the net force acting on the object multiplied by the time that that force is acting on the object. However, can I use this exact formula to help me calculate impulse as it stands? No, because... Although I know the time, remember I'm looking for impulse, I don't know the net force. So at the moment, I do not have enough information to use this. However, you should know the impulse momentum theorem, which states the following. The impulse acting on the object, which is essentially F net multiplied by time, is also equal to the change in momentum of the object. So if I can work out the change in momentum of the object, or if I know the change of momentum of the object, I therefore know the impulse that the wall exerts on the ball, or the wall exerts on the object. Do I know my change in momentum? Do I know this value over here? Yes, I do. It's negative 15, or 15 newton seconds away from the wall. That's my direction. So impulse is therefore equal to change in momentum as well. The reason why I use Newton seconds as my unit is because that is the unit for impulse. I know they gave the change in momentum um, unit as kilograms meters per second, but change in momentum is equal to impulse and they are asking for impulse. So just as a rule, if they are asking for impulse, please write your unit as Newton seconds, N dot S. Remember, this is not Newton's per second. That's a very different unit. Okay, it's Newton seconds. And that's your impulse. In this case, the negative just means away from the wall. In the next question, they want the magnitude of the average force that is exerted on the ball. So they are asking you for F net. Remember, they gave me time. So I hope the following formula is popping into your mind. 
if net multiplied by delta t equals delta p. And as we've already discussed, the change in momentum is negative 15. You need to put the negative in because in physics, as I mentioned, the negative indicates direction. And direction is very important in this context because if my change in momentum is negative, okay, opposite direction, negative direction, then my net force will be in the negative direction, in the opposite direction. And that does make sense because they want the magnitude of the force that is exerted on the ball. Here's the wall. Remember, we chose this way as positive. The ball is going to hit the wall. So it's going this way initially. The wall is going to exert a force in the opposite direction or in the negative direction on the ball, which causes its momentum to change, it causes its velocity to change, it causes it to bounce back in the opposite direction. So we need to sub it in as a negative, that will ultimately give me a negative F net, which as I said, makes sense in the context of this question. To get F net by itself, you say negative 15 divided by 0 comma 1, and you're going to get negative 150. Now remember, because F net, same thing as change in momentum, same thing as impulse, all of these things are vectors. The negative just tells me direction. So your final, final answer needs to be rewritten as a positive answer, 150 Newton. And again, the negative means away from the wall or in the negative direction, which in this case is away from the wall. Our last question is asking the velocity with which the ball rebounds, which means to bounce back. Again, it was initially going towards the wall. It hits the wall. It's in contact with the wall for 0.1 seconds, and then it is going to bounce back. So they're basically asking for VF. You can list all your variables again, or you can go back on your working and see everything that you already have. It makes sense for us again to use the impulse momentum theorem. So we're going to write out our formula. And remember, it's very important to write your formula first as it appears on your formula sheet. So that's exactly as it appears on the formula sheet. Do not manipulate it yet. That's how it appears. We want VF, but you could look at this formula and say, I don't see VF. But remember, this part of the formula can be expanded. Change in momentum is equal to this formula. So we're going to expand it. It is mass multiplied by final velocity, like that, minus mass multiplied by initial velocity. Again, I expand it by using the version that is on the formula sheet. Now I'm going to substitute in. We know what F net is. We just worked it out. It is negative 150. We know the time. But actually, we already know what this entire term is. Remember, this entire term is basically the impulse of the ball, which is also the change in momentum of the ball, which earlier we said is negative 15. So either you just put negative 15 here, or if you want to, you can say, okay, well, I know F net is negative 150 and the time is 0 0.1. Either way, this section, this term is negative 15. I hope that makes sense. Then the mass of your ball is 0 comma 5. Remember, it must be in kilograms. VF is what you're looking for. Your mass again is 0 comma 5. You may take it out as a highest common factor at this stage. And your initial velocity is positive 20 because it was initially going towards the wall, which is our positive direction. So a lot of my students ask me, ma'am, how do you solve this? Okay, this is basic math, but it can mess you up if you do it wrong. So first, you're going to multiply these two terms, well, these two numbers together to get negative 15. Okay, then... We've got these two multiplied by each other, so it's just 0, 0,5 VF, and then multiply these two together, so it's going to end up being negative 10. Then you take the negative 10 over, or you do the inverse operation, so add 10 to both sides. And now to isolate VF, what we basically do is negative 5 divided by 0, 0,5, which gets me negative 10. Now remember, again, in physics, the negative just tells me about direction. So your final velocity is 10 meters per second in the negative direction, which in our case is away from the wall. And always just check if the signs make sense to check your answer in a way. So remember, towards the wall was positive. Our initial velocity was positive. It's in contact with the wall for 0 0.1 seconds. Therefore, it's the, net, the wall is exerting a net force on the ball that's to the left. It's causing the ball to change direction. And ultimately, the final velocity is 10 meters per second. And it's going in the opposite direction away from the wall, which is why it came out as a negative.
Remember, in physics, it's always important to have your blank formula first, substitute, unit with answer and direction. I hope that this helped. Check out the rest of the playlist for more momentum videos. Bye, everyone.